Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Starting a new build. Now this build has been on pause since we've been working on Thomas's van. Uh, we just put out a van tour in that video, so feel free to check it in the link below. It's an awesome story and an awesome build, so check that out. But we're gonna talk about the 2020 Ford Transit all-wheel drive, high roof 148 that's behind me. Now this van, uh, we purchased new. It is a spec build for the shop. So we're putting this together to show all the capabilities of Odyssey Custom Vans as far as um, a different layout uh, build-wise. Now we're getting ready to do a lot of things really quickly over the next couple of weeks. This van is really gonna come together very fast. So before that happens, I wanna show you where I'm at right now, what I've worked on, and then what are the next steps to this build. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is start with the top of the van and work our way down. Uh, down at the bottom is where I've been doing the most work because we have a, a pretty complex floor system as far as what components we're installing and using. But let's briefly mention the top of the van uh, and then we'll keep going forward. So as you can see, we have the Adventure Wagon interior conversion kit put into this van. Um, we have bunk windows. So these are the awning windows, the AW 1033. Uh, so they, uh, when you twist them, they come out instead of sliding side to side really good for rain cover, uh, ventilation when it's raining. At the top here for Adventure Wagon, we went with a upgraded bamboo center panel, uh, which is really gonna tie into the design theme of this van. So we have uh, black, gray, bamboo, um, those sort of tones. We've got the black leather Ford seats up front, as well as black leather for our flip and fold that we'll talk about in just a second. But Pretty much the interior is done. The pieces that are missing, uh, those are just trim pieces that pop right in from Adventure Wagon. Uh, the technical stuff is pretty much taken care of already. Uh, we are gonna be doing a Dometic RTX 2000 air conditioner unit in the back of the van. So that is not put in yet, but where that's located, I can pretty much do that at any time. Do have the Max Air. Uh, this is the 7500 series, so it is uh, it has the thermostat where it will automatically open and close, um, has the remote. Up in the front, we're going to keep everything nice and clean. We're not going to do a shelf for the front. We're just going to keep it nice and open. Uh, behind me and in front of me, we're going to have uh, two kitchen galleys. The back one is going to be the Flatline Vanco 24-inch galley. Uh, it has a bamboo top, and it will have a microwave as well as the drawer slide out for the um, uh, the porta potty so let's go ahead and change the camera angle and move on down so right here this is where most of the work in this van has been um, going on uh, so this section of the van, we are working on, uh, we're going to go from front to back explaining everything. We went with the flip and fold seat. Flip and fold seat is, uh, it's just excellent because it does exactly what it says. It flips and folds out of the way. It's extremely easy. Uh, there's a lock here to unlock it when you're traveling. Comes down. Moves on up and it comes all the way back right up until the uh, kitchen galley. So you still have clearance. You can lean back without it rattling. Uh, very comfortable. Enough leg room in the front to sit and have the front swivel seats turn around and then you get enough room in the back. Uh, however, just like the storyteller, this area right here to slide in and out uh, is very tight. So you can kind of think of this as the same setup of how the groove lounge comes out. But where the groove lounge does not move, this one, you can see it's uh, spring assisted. It'll pop out right out of the way and you have a big, big walking area to access the kitchen galley here, as well as the 41 inch kitchen galley here. What's nice is you're gonna get uh, isotherm 65 drawer fridge, as well as a uh, cabinet in here that's gonna house your gray water tanks. So moving on to the back, we have right here in the middle, uh, this is a really cool. 
It is a in-floor shower pan from Tetra Van. And if we lift this up, this will be our flooring material, which is lawn seal, the black coin floor. That black coin floor will be uh, epoxy to this. So when you have this shut, you'll have a seamless transition in the floor. Um, but this pan is, uh, it's a one inch, it's one inch deep on the sides and it goes down to an inch and a half in the middle. Um, we've already pre-drilled a pilot hole before we cut out and hole saw the drain. This is gonna drain into a 16 gallon undermount tank and that's from Agile Off-Road. Um, if you guys have been following the live stream, that's the one I've been mentioning that I really enjoy. It's specifically designed for the Ford Transit and comes with pre-bent uh, metal hanging brackets. So this will be here. Uh, when you're not using the shower, you can take this, put this back in, nice and flush with the floor system. Um, and one of the details that's really just gonna throw it over the top is the where the kitchen galley is butt up against this, it is just a super clean line. Uh, very proud of that. Moving back, we've uh, gone ahead and laid out our footprint for our battery system. Uh, this battery system is gonna have 600 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate, uh, expandable up to 700, so there's a space for one more. I may go ahead and just get one more for the spec build just to fill it up, but 700 amp hour batteries. Uh, we have the Webasto uh, Evo 40, uh, Airtop Evo 40. And this guy is really awesome. It has an altitude adjustment. So depending on certain altitudes, if you're going you know, down the beach or you go up in the mountains or even like Colorado, it's gonna automatically adjust the, uh, the air fuel ratio so it runs properly. And it looks a little wild right now the way we have this ducted here. Uh, but what I don't wanna have happen is if you have this gear tray, this Flatline Vanco gear tray, um, if you have it loaded up with, uh, let's say gear, camping gear, um, and you don't, are not using it for bikes, um, you don't want the heater blowing onto this, uh, pull out. Um, just imagine if you had, you know, some of your luggage here and it's just getting roasted by the, the, uh, heater. You don't want that. So this is going to come through, uh, and this gap right here, uh, just worked out perfect for where our through bolts. So you know how I like safety. This tray is through bolted with grade eight bolts through the chassis. So it's not just bolted into this wood, it's through the chassis. Um, so it's gonna be extremely strong if you wanna put a lot of weight on this pullout slide, which is, which is kind of the point of a pullout slide anyways, to load it up and then get the gear in and out. So that is uh, why this looks kind of funny, but this will be completely enclosed in its own box right here. Um, from here to the inverter charger, we're gonna have all of our DC to DC and MPPT charge controllers. Um, we're gonna be going with a, uh, believe it or not, a Renogy One setup. So Renogy has put together um, a home system uh, that's also made for off-grid, uh, environments where it is a one screen for kind of like a one center console for all of your devices, uh, both your DC to DC charging, your solar, as well as your inverter charger, uh, just a dedicated communication panel. It also comes with three switches so that you can map those to interior lights, you know, water pump, that sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna try that system um, and so we'll have two of their integrated uh, 50 amp DC to DC MPPT charge controllers. So those will go right here and then we'll have our Victron Lynx distributor uh, getting everything nice and organized. We'll have our uh, breakers for solar. Our inverter chargers is a 3000 watt unit. We won't actually be using this exact one. We'll be look, uh, purchasing the new version of it uh, which goes with their off-grid system. It's called Rego, and it uh, looks exactly the same, except it's painted gray, um, but it has built-in Bluetooth connectivity. 
And so the way the Renogy One system works is all of these batteries right here have these uh, RJ45 connectors. And so they all link up communication wise. Uh, so all six or seven batteries are gonna be individually networked up together. Uh, that'll go to a Bluetooth hub. That Bluetooth hub from here, from the inverter charger, uh, and from the two DC to DC MPPT charge controllers, those will communicate to the Renji One hub. And you'll be able to access all of that on the hub and your phone. So you can download the uh, Renji app. So that'll be the power system, nice, nice and clean. I'm gonna make it as compact as possible in here. So it's close to the wall as possible. Um, this all had to be done because uh, this had to have a uh, footprint of where it's gonna be laid out. And so what I did is I took my 80-20 and I made sure I offset it by an inch and a half. It's gonna allow me uh, enough room for my three quarter inch panel uh, and then that will give us another three quarter inches of space between here so that there's no problem in, uh, you know, moving this, this guy in and out. Um, but the reason all of this has to be done first, the flip and fold, the shower pan, the heater, power system, and the slide out tray is because all this is going through the floor. Uh, we got a lot of through bolts, the um, flip and fold as well as this. So we have a lot of floor penetrations and it's really good to do this. It's essentially, uh, it's an essential part of doing the floor with this kind of setup. Because uh, you want to have it all right, then take it all out so that when you put your nice flooring down, you're not having to make any modifications after the fact. Uh, you can lay the uh, lawn sill down. You can pre-cut it out as much as you can and that's gonna allow you to work with it easier um, because once you get the epoxy set up, and we do have an epoxy, uh, how to install lawn seal uh, floor epoxy video, you only have about 30 minutes working time with that. So that may seem like a lot, but 15 minutes uh, pot life, and then you have 15 minutes of working time. So that's seven minutes per half side, and that can get really stressful very quickly. So the more you can do ahead of time, the more you can prep for the floor, the better. Uh, it just makes doing this uh, enjoyable. So we know how everything's gonna be on the floor. Um, over here behind me, no modifications necessary. Uh, we'll do that later, but that has to do with the water system. Essentially for your water system, the only thing you're gonna have to worry about uh, is the hole going through the floor for the uh, drain uh and the vent as well and sometimes depending on what you'd like to do you can integrate those into the same same thing but yeah we are finished with all of our cuts so the next thing you'll see is i'll be taking out this floor i'll be putting it on the table behind me um, which is the exact size of the interior of a van so it's a 12 by 6 uh it's actually 12 by 8 foot table and we'll take all these panels out, we'll flip them upside down, and then we'll start to uh, put in our aluminum uh, uh, bracing bars. It's essentially a way for us to uh, reinforce these seams right here. So if you don't reinforce this seam, over time, the up and down, the flexibility of the insulation, even though it's hard insulation, the flex will flex this uh, lawn seal joint. And if you're OCD like me, uh, that may bother you. So to make sure that doesn't happen, uh, we're gonna be using what I call the humble road method. So we will be uh, cutting out two one inch channels uh, from the foam and we will be installing aluminum uh, strips going, or, aluminum square tubing, and then we'll actually sheet metal screw into the tubing through a countersunk hole in the floor of this wood panel. And uh, that allow this gap to be this uh, secure so there's no flex over time. We'll be using a Loctite PL Marine 
So that allow us to maintain flexibility, but still uh, adhere it to the uh, van chassis itself. And then, um, yeah, last but not least, we will do the, uh, put the epoxy floor in. Once all that's finished, we'll get into putting the uh, kitchen alley cabinets back in. So while the epoxy floor is curing, uh, we will install the microwave and we'll do our modifications to our 41 inch. Um, now, one thing to note, uh, I'm using a special paint that I've researched and uh, epoxy will stick to wood, but sometimes it doesn't do a, a good job. And this paint that I'm going to use is going is specifically made to uh, paint epoxy onto wood and make sure there's a good adhesion. So I'll tell you about that product. It's a Benjamin Moore product. Uh, so we'll tell you about that more later. Yeah, just wanted to give you guys a quick update. Um, let's do a short video here. Uh, we still have the power to run. Uh, I guess I'll mention power really quick before I close this video out. Uh, the two MPPT DC to DC charge controllers that we're going to use, uh, they're an integrated uh, charge controller. So the DC to DC charger and the MPPT are combined. Um, each box is a 50 amp uh, max. So we'll have 100 amp coming from the Ford alternator. Um, we do have a uh, 250 amp alternator. So as far as power, uh, we're doing just fine. All right, that is it. A little update video. Guys, if you like videos that are in this format, uh, put a uh, like to the video and also give me a comment in the comment section below. Uh, really appreciate to uh, hear your feedback. And don't forget to check out our DIY van build cheat sheet. So what is the DIY van build cheat sheet? Well, it's essentially an Excel sheet of all the items that I buy for these vans when I build them. So the sheet currently has over 250 curated products. So when I mean curated, those are products I've specifically bought uh, for the last three years on Amazon myself to build these vans. So if you're wanting to save time and money, if you're wanting to buy a part that Nick has bought and you don't have to worry about combing the internet and then wasting money buying parts that may not be the best fit for you, go ahead and click on the link below in the description. Uh, get the free cheat sheet. It's 100% free. It's just there to help you guys out. So you put your name and your email address in, uh, and when you click on it, it's going to be delivered directly to your inbox, completely free. Uh, it's just really um, a form that's going to you know, help you when you're building your van. Uh, it helped me when I got started. I'll tell you what, the tool section, if I could have just bought all the tools on there to start with, uh, it, I would have saved a lot of time. So the tool section is a section that is very important on that list. Uh, everything I use in the shop to do the rivets for the adventure wagon kit, to do the uh, PEX connections with the, um, the ProPEX tools, like the expansion tools, uh, the hole saws that I'll use to drill out this for the floor pan, they're all on that sheet and uh, it's there to help you out. It's completely free. It's called the DIY Van Build Cheat Sheet. Click on the link in the description below and uh, we'll send it right over to you. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this update video and we'll see you in the next one.